So the next question is, is the incidence of uterine rupture in pregnancy higher with laparoscopic myomectomy compared to abdominal myomectomy? This is the question commonly asked. Now, there are many case reports on uterine rupture after laparoscopic myomectomy. Here you can see uh, this case reports that starts with uh, in 1995 and then goes down to quite recent 2004, 2002. And here are more recent reports. Says a report of seven uterine rupture uh, cases after laparoscopic myomectomy, an update of the literature. Uterine rupture after laparoscopic myomectomy, two cases. Here, uterine rupture after laparoscopic myomectomy for removal of a pedunculated myoma and spontaneous uterine rupture at 27 weeks of pregnancy after laparoscopic myomectomy. So someone actually grouped this, all this together and did a, uh, a meta-analysis. And I will just review this meta-analysis to, to answer that question, whether the uterine rupture is, what is the rate of uterine rupture after a laparoscopic myomectomy and, you, and uh, open myomectomy? So this is the result. It's a very complicated uh, result here. And what I'll do is I'll break the reports down for you all. Okay, so the first uh, result is that in this 3,685 pregnancy, there were 29 cases of uterine rupture, a reported re uh, result of 0.79%, uh, one during labor and 28 prior to onset of labor. So there was a trend for an increased occurrence of uterine rupture following laparoscopic myomectomy. There were 24 events out of the, uh, out, uh, out of the uh, total amount which is 1.2% versus three event in, the, in, in 705 cases, that is 0.4%. But the, set, the differences were not found to be statistically uh, significant. There was one case of uterine rupture after hysteroscopic myomectomy. One case of uterine rupture during labor, but the mode of myomectomy was not known. And uh, of the 28 ruptures occurred during pregnancies between 17 and 48, 40 weeks of, pregnancy, of gestation, 80% of the ruptures occurred between 28 and 36 weeks of pregnancy. So continuing on, out of the 400 women who attempted vaginal birth after laparoscopic myomectomy, a large majority, that is 373 women or 93% eventually experienced a successful vaginal delivery, while only 7% were delivered by caesarean section. Out of the 124 women who attempted vaginal delivery after a myomectomy by an open approach, 109 or 88% delivered by vaginal, uh, by vaginally compared to 15 or 12% who needed to be delivered by uh, secondary caesarean section. So there was no significant difference for the risk of secondary caesarean section after a laparoscopic compared to an open myomectomy. So if a patient has undergone laparoscopic myomectomy or open myomectomy, if you have decided for the patient to have a vaginal delivery, their success rate for, attempt, for achieving a spontaneous vaginal delivery is about the same. Now, just over 50% of the fibroids removed uh, that lead to uterine rupture, the uterine wall and subsequent pregnancy were localized in the intramural part of the womb, which is 54%. The median size of the fibroid was five centimeters. And the study, they found no clear correlation between the risk for uterine rupture and location of the fibroid and the suturing technique, whether the operations were done in the universities or, or in a non-university hospital. So there were eight neonatal deaths uh, following the uterine rupture, five for laparoscopy and three for open surgery, and there were no maternal deaths. So in the discussion, what they said is that the prevalence of uterine rupture following myomectomy, all types of surgery was 0.79%, which is comparable to after caesarean section, which is about 1%. There's no significant difference between the incidence of rupture during pregnancy following laparoscopic, which is 1.2% versus open, which is 0.4%. And a higher primary caesarean section rate after laparoscopic than open myomectomy. So most, pe most people, many people who do laparoscopic myomectomy just decide to do an elective caesarean section as opposed to open myomectomy because probably fear 
of litigation probably. But if they allow them to go into vaginal delivery, their success rate is the same. So as you can see here, uterine rupture in women following myomectomy almost exclusively occurs during pregnancy and very exceptionally during active labor as opposed to prior caesarean section. We all know that the uterine rupture in caesarean section, prior caesarean section occurs during labor as opposed to myomectomy. And this is explained because of the site of the surgery as in most myomectomies, the surgery is done on the body of the womb, which is the corporal part of the womb as opposed to the lower segment in the case of a caesarean delivery. There is also no significant increase in risk of secondary caesarean section after laparoscopy compared to open. Attempts at vaginal birth seems equally highly successful following laparoscopy or an open myomectomy. So there's only one case of uterine rupture that occurred during labor, but the details of that myomectomy was not known. It was believed that there was a high dose of oxytocin used in that particular case. Only a small number of uterine ruptures indicate no clear evidence on location and size of fibroid that lead to uterine rupture. So this I will come to in a little while. And there's no relationship between use of suturing technique and uterine rupture. So most uterine rupture, as, as I said earlier, occurred in the mid trimester of pregnancy. So, so you can see that uh, to answer the question, is the incidence of uterine rupture in pregnancy higher with laparoscopic myomectomy compared to abdominal myomectomy? It appears that there is a tendency towards higher, but it was not statistically significant. 